As far as artificial sphincters, there is one option that's been around for 40 years, and it's a great option for that patient that has, you know, urinary leakage, you know, generally after prostate surgery. Um, it's, you know, really treats really all severity, all levels of severity of, of incontinence in that patient population. Uh, the way I describe it to patients is, is it's, there's a balloon that goes around the urethra on the inside and it's almost like, you know, normally the sphincter would clamp that closed so that, you know, somebody doesn't leak urine and um, this device takes it over. It's like literally somebody's in there pinching the urethra closed and the patient has a, um, a pump that's implanted that is under the skin that they can pump to open that cuff up so that they can go and void normally and then it closes back up and then they can go about their day without fear of you know needing to wear pads or have leakage or any any other of those social issues associated with it. Artificial sphincters have been known to go 15, 20 years. It's been around for a long time with very few design changes. I mean, it's, it was a well-designed device from the outset, um, and it works great. Uh, but there are, you know, there are those occasional mechanical issues that you do see. That's been a big part of my practice as well: is the revision, replacement, repair of those sort of things. You know, even in the guys that put in these things, I think there's a smaller number of people that know how to sort of revise and correct these things. Slings uh, for, for men are about treating incontinence as well. Um, they are a, um, another type of surgery. Uh, it's a device that's a little less hands-on for the patient, but it doesn't quite treat higher degrees of incontinence as well. So I think of incontinence as a spectrum. So guys that are more on the favorable side of it that are still bothered by their symptoms generally are going to uh, talk with me about having a sling put in, whereas guys on the more severe side of things uh, will generally proceed to an artificial sphincter. The slings, when the slings are put in, um, and there's different types of slings as well, but the gist of the slings are that they're sort of enhancing the patient's normal sphincter function, and some of them will also provide some increased resistance as well, but those are fixed objects. They're not mechanical, and so once they're in, they're in, and the patient doesn't have to do anything to sort of make them work. So that's wonderful for those you know, guys who have lower levels of incontinence because once you put it in, they don't have to think about it, um, and I think that's a, a nice thing. You know, the, the artificial sphincter is a wonderful procedure, and it's a wonderful device, uh, but it's, it's like buying a car. You know, you drive it off the lot, it's going to work great. Ten years from now, maybe not so much, and this, you know, it's got working parts. It's got pistons, it's got, you know, pumps, it's got fluid, you know, you can have leaks and brakes and what have you. You can take a car into the shop. Your artificial sphincter has to come see me for a tune-up, and so you know we have to do surgery in order to fix that kind of business. Now the slings, set it, don't think about it, and you know it does its work all on its own.